My name is Jeff Udick. I'm an educational consultant, presenter, and uh, substitute teacher at the moment. And uh, I guess one of the things I'm really passionate about when it comes with uh, where we are with, with technology and, and schools and just kind of what the future holds is, is looking at how do we use the internet for what the internet's purpose really was. And if you go back, you, there's, there's a couple articles you can go back and read, but one of the quotes comes from one of the first founders, kind of the founders of the internet. Uh, his name is Steve Case, and he's actually the CEO of AOL, if anybody remembers uh, America Online back in the day. And one of his quotes back uh, when they did an interview with him, and he went back and talked about what was it about AOL that you felt you know, that you saw to propel that company forward. And one of the things, one of the interesting quotes was, he said, you know, when the internet was coming of age, what, what AOL understood and what he understood was that communities trumped content. And I think we've lost that along the way. I think we, we forget how powerful communities are, and truly that's what the internet is about. Uh, if you just you stop and think for a second, how much time when you're on technology or using technology, how much time are you actually connecting with other people? And it's interesting because I, I sit here and I think about you know almost everything I do on the internet, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or email uh, or the, just the communications we do, that the internet allows is really, that's the foundation of it. It, it. it allows us to connect to each other. And if that's the foundation of the internet, why is it that that is the first thing that we try to block with students? Rather than enhance that and use that in our classrooms to the best of our ability, we, we try to block the community aspect of it or the connection aspect of it and try to force kids into a content side of it that really isn't kind of the second use of the internet. And I think for me that that's a big part of it is how do we get back to the roots of really what the what I feel the internet was really about which is connecting people. And I think we're in this we're in a, a really interesting time period where we're seeing that actually come to fruition which is you look at things like you know Facebook, you know the largest the largest social network out there. You look at things like Twitter you look, at, you look at numbers, I mean staggering numbers around how many people are in these social networks to connect. It's something right now like 50% of everybody that has internet access also has a fa Facebook account. I mean how powerful is that? And yet we try to with students, we, we don't see that as power. We see that some way is, is not allowing them to access that, to access all of those, those people. We look at things like, like Twitter and what it allows you to do and how it allows you to instantly form communities around any given topic. And you know, there's just there's so much power there. When we look, stop and look at what the internet is really about, how do we help students really understand that and to use that? When we all know that if we stop and think about it, we probably use the internet that way for the majority of our work. And it's not going to be any less. And I think that's my issue right now is, you know, social networks, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or whatever comes along next, it's going to be built around social and, and bringing people together around common causes. And so how do we start teaching students to take advantage of that, to use it properly, and just, I don't know, be able to be a global citizen. And I, and I guess that's a big part of it is we, you know, as this connection continues to come and, you know, uh, the UN has come out and said that 40% of the world's population is already connected to the internet and that the other 60% is going to be coming online very soon. I mean, the amount of people that are being added to the internet daily is incredible and, and we need to understand that that's going to change things. What does the world look like when 100% of the population is going to have internet access? And this generation is going to see that. And so are we, are we preparing them to communicate with, with other cultures? Are we preparing them to look at their own social networks and, and how does that look? And it's already affecting things as, as small or as close to home as, as the way that recruiting is done. There's an article written in Business Week uh, back in September of 2014 that shows that 94% of recruiters now look LinkedIn, meaning your LinkedIn resume is more important now than your paper resume, yet in schools, are we teaching kids to have a social resume? And what does that look like? And if you don't have a social resume, the paper resume doesn't matter. And so we have to start to shift, and I think, and look at the ways that these communities and these connections on um, what the internet allows, really allows us to teach students how to take advantage of it. And you can bring it down to something as small as, you know, or starting in places like in second, third, and fourth grade, when students finish reading a book, why is not part of finish reading a book that you email the author and give them your feedback? Or you write a blog post and you give a book review? I mean, not, not an author alive today, I think, you know, isn't either on Twitter or has a website that you can leave comments on or, or at the very least has an email account. And are we teaching kids that not only can you read, 
but now you can give feedback to the author. And how does that transition that when kids become citizens and are able to vote, that you can do the same thing? You know, you can go to your newspaper and you can leave a comment on any article. Um, you have, you know, all of the politicians now Facebook pages and Twitter accounts. And how do you engage in the political landscape through these different means? And I, I guess there's just, there's a lot there that I think we're, we're spending a lot of energy in schools trying to block students from rather than finding ways to engage them in the conversation. And there's so many different things. And, and I just, I think, I think we need to reevaluate how social networks and how the true foundation of the internet of communicating, uh, communicating with people and creating communities finds its way into schools and into our curriculum.